so how did things start to change? How did, how did Manchester's approach towards its, its problems evolve? It's been a generation-long project, and I haven't been here through all of that time. So part of this is me observing it as an, as an outsider. Um, I'm a kind of homecomer now. Right. And um, I think it was, at its origins, a political project. The politics of the area have been stable in the sense that there has been a Labour majority on the council for a very long time. And there were two leaders, Sir Richard Lees, who was leader of the council, the political leader, and Sir Howard Bernstein, who was the executive, the leader of the uh, city executive, um, just had a long-term uh, plan to fix things and turn things around. There was a moment as well in 1996 when there was an IRA bomb that blew up a large part of the city centre, which created an opportunity to say, not only here's an area of land that we can redevelop, but also this is a moment at which we're going to say, enough, it's time for our city to change, we're going to pull together. The core of the city centre was completely devastated. Uh, so the main shopping uh, area uh, was inaccessible for months and months and months. And of course there was so much devastation that a major rebuilding programme of its own right had to be uh, created. So how did you think about that? How did you think about the opportunities that that... that well, the, the most important requirement in the initially was, was to actually get the city functioning again, you know, how we get people into work, how we get the public transport system operational, how we actually got buildings which, while superficially damaged, were still able to play a full and active part in the city's functioning in the future. So that was a big task. And those early weeks were spent working with businesses, working with people generally. But what we wanted to do, of course, was not just restore what had been lost, but to actually create a platform for longer term and even more successful change. So one of the things you, you experience when you walk around downtown Manchester today is just the huge amount of pedestrian flows, mm -hmm. that it's become a very pedestrian city, but uh, presumably it wasn't like that. No, it wasn't. Uh, and indeed, there were, as I've said, many barriers to pedestrian movement, which we needed to break down uh, as far as possible. And of course, there were some fantastic assets of Manchester, which had remained somewhat invisible particularly the historic quarter around the Chetons, around the cathedral, uh, which we wanted to bring into the uh, economic and social fabric of the city. So for us, this was um, an opportunity to rethink how we plan for people's movement, how we plan for longer term investment, and also how we plan for the continued diversification of the cities. Was there local opposition to the plan? Was it hard to? No. No, we, we, you know, again, uh, because of the work we'd done uh, in the period leading up uh, to that event, you know, we were very clear about how we wanted our city mm -hmm. to change. Um, it would have taken us 20, 30 years uh, to have completed that process, obviously. But the bomb gave us, um, uh, with hindsight, it was the opportunity to actually replan and rethink the role of certain critical parts of the city centre.